Well, Mr. Jain, thank you very much, sir. Uh, with me is my colleague, uh, Nick. So, can I start? I'm also recording it. He is my colleague, and me. So he's the uh, the person there. So, sir, today what we would do is we would look at two different things. We would look at automation from Tally, right? And uh, we would be looking at Microsoft and Google technologies. One minute. Hello. Okay. Yes, sir. So we would be looking at Microsoft and Google technologies, right? Okay. And uh, we would be basically looking at how these how these technologies can help you automate processes. You know, uh, one, minute, one minute, one minute, just, just wait, wait, one minute. Okay. 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 Make it easy. We will look at automation of processes from Tally and we we'll look at Google and Microsoft technologies. So, uh, basically, uh, what we would do is first, sir, is that. Uh, we would look at this case wherein suppose say, you have an Excel based report and you're using basically cell. With basic, uh, so this gives you a lot of flexibility. What we would be doing is converting this Excel based report onto column based report for automation. Right. So, uh, you know, and uh, uh, what is the kind of feature within Excel you're looking to automate? Say, suppose you're using if then else in Excel in DAX, it will be joins and lookup value. H lookup and V lookup in Excel would be joints and filter. So the whole thing here is, uh, whole thing what we are trying to do is that we are trying to automate this particular spreadsheet which is coming out. Right. So uh, uh, we will be trying to automate the spreadsheets which are coming out. And the type of reports you can automate are reports where there is a lot of large tally data, their metrics and cross tab reports. So if you're looking at it by time, the inventory valuation reports where is weighted average FIFO is involved. This is also this for this for this the Microsoft tool is preferred a lot. In the time series analysis month by month or a quarter by quarter. Any custom reports which are involving sales uh, sales order and account receivable. Any graphical reports or any audit reports which involve TDS and GST. We will look at also the TDS and the GST graphical report uh, uh, the audit reports. And in order to run the tool, you require minimal 8 GB RAM and Windows 7 and above. And this is on the whole what you're trying to do. You're taking 100 page of tally data and compressing it to one page. So if I have a 100 page book and make it into one page, what will happen is that I will be able to read the book further. That is what this tool is doing. Right. So I'll just make it very easy for you. And what you will get is you will get, uh, you don't need to code. You'll get very fast data access. It's a very easy to use desktop server application. You will get lower number of spreadsheets because most of our accounting friends are primarily spending a maximum amount of time in making spreadsheets. And what you will get is automated MIS graphs, dashboards, and time series analysis. Right. So there are two, three things, sir, which you will have to do it. Tally has got two movements. One is the ledger movement and one is the inventory movement. Ledger movement is with the taxes. The inventory movement is without the taxes. So linking the two is actually entailing the custom functions. So that is what actually we have extracted the raw tally data and built in these custom functions using the Microsoft tool in order to make it really, really fast. Any, any questions, sir? I'm just cutting it very, very short because I think, uh, you know, you're very busy. So I'll make it very, very short. So I, in order to run the tool, what I do is I simply quit. I go down to configure, I go down to product and features, I manage the local TDL and I go and click something called wherever is my tally extraction code module there. So it's very simple. Suppose I've got E colon. I go down to un unabuff. This is a... <coughs> and then I go down to this portion and here is my TCP. So what I do is I right click upon it. I click on properties. I go to security. I simply click on this. 
cancel and then I go here for any Italian then I say control alt V enter 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 once I do that then I come back here quit right and simply extract the companies so for as many number of companies possible you'll be able to extract data one two three four five six any number unlimited number of companies you'll be able to extract the data then you simply open your Power BI file. So this is like a raw file, which, which we will give you because you're constantly making reports and simply click on refresh. And all the data from all the, all the companies is going to be refreshed. This is the entire deployment process. Any questions, sir, up till now? No, 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 you can see. Right. So where you download the Power BI per se is that you come down to here, Power BI, download. Right, and I click on this, and this is the second one. This is the second one, which is the module. This is the link which you need to do in order to download the Power BI. It is a free tool, and you can download it just like an Excel. Or we will we will download it and upload it for you. <coughs> now I'll show you where there is going to be, you know, a sample case <coughs> where things will move faster for you. <coughs> so let's just uh, do it. Just let, let, let it just refresh for a second. Now it's loaded. Now, sir, so see, all of us have worked with Tally and in the statement of account, there's something called, sorry, in the, in the account books, there's something called a sales register, right? I go down to the sales register. I click enter. I need to extract all the data of the sales register. I go, yes, 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 yes. Click here, right? This is for my <coughs> sales register. This primarily the sales register is used for GST and tax audit. Am I correct? Yes or no? Because here and I get the GST number, the PAN number, etc. Is it clear? Yes, yes or no? <coughs> Hello? Yes, yes. Similarly, for my GST or two okay. area cancellation, I use the purchase register. I go here, I click here, and then I click say columnar and then say yes, 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 yes. I extract all of it here. Is it correct? Yes or no? If I need to merge these two, then I have to use something called a VLOOKUP or an HLOOKUP. Is it clear? Now I will give you the entire tax report. So you can actually see the TDS in the tax report here also, which is uh, which has been made here. But I will give you the entire tax report from one place. So you go down to what we call the ledger view. And here you have all the objects which are required for making your tax report. PAN number, IT number, primary group, rate of tax calculation, whether sales, TDS type, TDS rate name, type of duty, etc. Is it clear? So what I do here is I start clicking up here and I start, what I do is I start picking it up as in Excel. I pick up the company name, <coughs> the cost category name, cost center name, cost center name, this thing, document number, document date. For GSTR 2A reconciliation, I need the reference name. Is it clear? Hello? Reference number, reference name. Typical, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say, right? Then I need the rate of tax calculation, et cetera, et cetera. All the objects are here, right? So I can simply go and pick it up one by one, voucher type ledger, voucher type parent ledger for my audit purposes, and I pick it up. Then in order to find out my sales and purchase, I simply pick up my sales ledger amount, and then simply the purchase ledger amount. <clears throat> you see this? I have actually combined these two reports by a single click of button. So your first benefit is going to be because a lot of these entities are actually coming in from the TDS report. So when we extract the TDS data, because TDS reconciliation for chartered accountants is very time consuming. Am I correct? <clears throat> so you basically pick up all the TDS report data. So this TDS report, TDS uh, data comes in like this. I pick up my company name. Right. The name of the um, payment code, SEC code, all this is there, right? Now, all this TDS data has also been brought up at the ledger level. And just by using a simple Excel tool, I can get both my sale as well as the purchase data in one single book. So what was entailing a consolidation of spreadsheets between these two reports is now done it simply often. 
any questions sir up till now Yes, so what you can do is you can straight away pick up this report and your TDS and GST reconciliation can be done very, very quickly. Right, that is where increased productivity is. Now, within the ledger view, these are all your balance sheet entries. <coughs> Am I correct? Yes. And these are all your PL entries. So these have all been pre coded. Right. And we have brought in other attributes like is TDS applicable, is TDS applicable, everything is there. So this ledger view is going to be one of your most critical views. So this is immediate return. Take your TCP, extract the tally data, refresh the data, tuck, tuck, tuck. So this TDS and GST report is already built in. So you have to pick up the second one. We, were, we had put the first one for audit purposes. Pick up the second one and you're done. For any customer, you can do the tedious reconciliation very, very quickly. You can even build up your audit logic in this. Any questions, sir? No, no not that. Not okay. Now, the next report which I'm coming down to is, which almost all your customers will love, and which is one of the most critical reports is, it is payable and the receivable report. Most of your customers would have a case wherein their money is stuck. Mm. Right. Either in payable or in receivables. Mm. Across multiple companies. Am I clear? Yeah. So if I take this, I don't want a group company wise. If I take this particular report, which I'm taking the statement of accounts or the payable report. So this payable and receivable can be easily extracted from it. And you can customize your age also with the same, right? So you can easily make this particular report. This your customers or your company will find it very, very useful. Mm -hmm. Clear? So I am actually not even uh, showing you ready mate i'm actually making the report and showing it to you it is that easy to use is it clear mr jain yes so the first Thank one you. is you're going to be your tds and gst reconciliation which you can start off immediately so i've told you the ledger view simply you simply have to pick up the object second one is your payable and receivable hmm. Hmm. Now, the third need for most of the accountants is slightly more critical. Please listen to me carefully. Many a times, the clients are not happy with their inventory valuations. Hmm. Right? It could be inventory valuations with weighted average or FIFO. Across one or more companies if you ask them they will tell you that look we have this problem we are not sure of the inventory valuation is it clear yes, yes. with batches and without batches in a nutshell you're talking about closing stock value and cost of goods sold so closing stock value cost of goods sold and gross profit numbers Am I clear? <laughs> that is what the client will say. Right. That for the accountant is made. So they accountants for those companies have to spend hours, hours and hours in Excel to arrive at the right closing stock value, cost of goods sold or gross profit number which I think is the most important thing in any company. How much have I made is what I need to know. Is it clear? Yes. yes. So now for that, actually, I'm making a snapshot. Again, I'm showing it to you from raw. You don't need to worry. I will look at the gross profit or the closing stock value. One case is going to be without batches because he will say, look, boss, I don't have any batches only. Hmm. So in case I don't have any batches, then I come down to my stock item view. Hmm. 
and here for any date you will be able to capture your closing balance quantity the weighted average rate right and your gross profit so i simply pick up here i pick up my item name sorry dear i pick up my sorry company name i pick up my item name. so there are a lot of other things they will say i want cost category also credit debit which discount how much of the batch rate discount but let's leave that aside i will pick up my i this thing the third thing which i need to pick up is my stock item name right so you will find all this so you will find alias also and so forth so i pick up my stock item name right and thereafter sir straight away pick up for these given dates my closing balance quantity my weighted average rate this weighted average rate is now coming in from the inward values because inward value and inward quantity at any level of granularity right because whatever is my inward value by divided by inward quantity is going to define my weighted average rate that into closing balance quantity is going to define my closing stock value am i clear and then you can also get the gross profit this is without batches when i come down to with batches again we have made it very very simple as using it in excel we simply just go and give your clients a very high value thing they will pay you lakhs because i have got two three customers who are charging lakhs for this <clears throat> partners who are who are charging lakhs for this so i pick up this i pick up my batch name i pick up my date i pick up my company name i pick up my go down name because go down wise i can also have because this closing balance quantity sir is so you can adjust you, you can tell us look i want to adjust it by this so batch name go down name company name my item name am i clear so i have batch name date company name item name i'll put on the item name just one second this is the name not this one stock item name right hmm. this comes in here so go down name item name company name date and the batch name and based on that i can give you your inward amount your outward amount so inward quantity invert quant amount your weighted average rate am i correct your closing batch quantity at the level of batch go down item and company and same with you will get the closing balance back. now this is coming actually your stock summary report am i clear this is my this summary report across all the customers this is what i need what is the my what is my perpetual gross profit hmm. Hmm. yes or no sir yes. this is what we are giving it to you in excel in literally in an excel or a pivot form so in this particular demo <clears throat> i have shown you three things which are very high value add which are deemed to be very high value add for your customers weighted average fifo then generation of metrics and cross tab reports your tds and gst reconciliation then there are a lot of analysis done by month by month quarter by quarter or metrics or a cross tab report they want to see how my sales is moving over period and that i will show you can work with unlimited tally data right and the payable and the receivable reports so metrics reports sir i will show you i will make it and show it to you here 
I simply click it here. And I pick up ledger view and say, suppose I want to pick up my ledger name. So I pick up this name and I want to see, sorry, ledger name. And I want to see what was my sales value over periods and time. So I, we have already defined a lot of date and time entities here. So this we'll have to just know it. So I put it in the column. So I say for year and month. So I can easily get a matrix report like this. Now making this in Excel each month and each time is a very, very cumbersome process. So sir, you see how much time you can save by these technologies now, you know? And what we have done is we have basically made the bridge, but you can generate any amount of reports automatically in a flash of a pen. People are doing 25, 30 reports also. I can even add a group here. So I go here, group, and then do a drill down. Then ledger primary also. Ledger group also. You see, all this drill down is all possible. So this I've handled is a very small portion, which is of automation of spreadsheets up till now. Sir, any queries? Not, no, not that. Right. So this no. is the this is the case. There are innumerable amount of charts which you can make. So I can also show you the type of charts which you can make to make the information look very, very attractive. So I will look into two charts. One is your ribbon chart. Now, sir, ribbon chart gives you the ranking over periods in time. It's a drill down chart. So if, say, for example, one item was second in one month and was fourth in another month. Then a ribbon chart would be used. Funnel chart, sir, is used for a sales order processing. Right. So how many were in sales order, then how much went to sales invoice and so forth. So you can use a funnel chart for the same. Line chart is the same as you use in Excel. Scatter plot is something which is very easy to use in Power BI, but which is very difficult in Excel, wherein you have three different measures, values by item, x-axis is sales inventory, y-axis is purchase inventory, by company, and the size of the bubble is the closing balance value. So you see, this is so far item one is clearly an overstocked item because sales is very low, but purchase is very high, right? But this is the right stock. So tree map is basically on a single page, you can see across hierarchies. Waterfall chart is, I can see the percentage change over period in time, right? So this actually I've given you a very brief overview of, and there are a lot of other charts which you can actually do it. It's an it's an actually a C by which you can do it, sir. Any questions, sir, up till now? No. Right. So you can just take this tally data, simply extract it and make any kind of report. I would recommend you to start with TDS and GST report. This is one of the most critical features because TDS and GST, specifically in the getting the TDS ledger master data is a pain and then consolidating it. This payment code data, TDS rate, HNSEC code, and then putting it up with the ledger master is a pain. This PM made it simple for you. So you can start off it and reduce your times to service the end client. See, even if I'm saving about an hour, I get my system process and done in half an hour or one hour, and I'm able to save 30 minutes per client. My client is going to pay me the same, but I'm able to get a lot more done, right? The second you could look at is your inventory reports, gross profit, cost of goods sold analysis, batch wise inventory. Because this is what is the lot of people are asking about it. 
Third, of course, you can look at payable and receivable also. But a lot of the customers have this problem of money being stuck in the market. Now, the fourth, which is actually a critical point is wherein the customers have gone one step ahead are the sales order pending reports. See, it's not with bill payable and bill receivable, I can handle everything, right? I need to know how much is my sales order pending for a particular client, because then only I can take an action. Suppose I've got 1 lakh rupees outstanding, but I don't have any sales order pending. So I will pursue that client aggressively for collections. But if I have 1 lakh rupees outstanding, but I have a sales order pending of 4 lakh rupees, then I have a lot of leverage. Is, am I clear or not? Hmm. So that also you can make this too. So I've combined sales order with bill payable and bill receivable, and you can pick it up from here. Previous month, just one second. Sales order pending item. Company name, date, what is my balance quantity, age. This is my easily giving me my sales order pending list. Party ledger name, rate, reference number, stock item name, order number, order due date. All of it is coming. How much is the discount? All of it, I'm getting it here. Which is actually your sales order pending report. Hello? 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 Hello, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. So this is our sales order pending report. Sir, any questions? No, not that. We are not familiar with your product. Yes, sir. Product. Yeah, what is the cost of this product? No, no, I am not familiar with your product. That is the problem. I cannot ask any question. Suppose we are using the product, then only we can have some questions. Okay, fine. Otherwise, your next step, sir, is that you want to get it deployed at your machine. Is my understanding correct? Pardon? You want to deploy it on your machine? Yeah, and then only we can... Done, sir. So that, is the, so that is the next step. So we will, I will give you a package. You can deploy it and you can see the some client's data and actually also do analysis on your own. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine. Because sir, uh, actually, uh, I'm, I'm from, because sir, uh, your voice is slightly low. So uh, that is why I was having okay. a bit of a problem understanding it. So deploy it on your machine. Okay, so okay. the cost of this product, yeah, I just okay, want to tell you. Yes? Yeah, tell me, tell me. The cost of this product per tally serial number for one year is 5K. One? Plus GST. And in the initial purchase, we automate one report for the end client. So you can give me one blank report, one Excel report. Right. And we will automate one report for you. Something like this. Okay. That will be the part of the initial purchase. But sir, actually, once you know the tally schema, and you understand it, you can make your own report because people are making their own reports actually with it. See, what is the requirement of this data? This extraction of this type of data? Where we are using it? Okay, closing stock valuation, all right. I can understand. But what about other things? Sir, every chartered accountant is involved in TDS and GST reconciliation. Is this available in the tally data? What's the problem for that? Yes, but with large data. Okay, suppose large data is there. Right. 
that is what the first thing but see what type of difficulty you are seeing in the tds part sir so you will have to uh, repeat the point so what is the problem in doing tds and gst reconciliation within tally no, the, in the tds aspect you are saying if suppose the data is very large what type of problem tally you are facing stuck. actually tally can get stuck when you extract the data no chance why why tally get stuck what is the reason no chance because it's huge amount of data for TDS and GST reconciliation, see, at see, times, see, 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 how, see how much how much number of data you are saying is a huge. Suppose you have got say fifty thousand vouchers, hundred k vouchers. Hmm. Hmm. Then this is applicable only for such uh, type of uh, business. No, sir. Business. You can. No, sir, that is not only the case. Suppose I've got 40 companies, 30 companies. I mm. want to extract the that data is... at one simple go and do the complete reconciliation. Oh, how can it be? It is a different data and different pan. It is different than everything is different. How can you compile in the entire thing in one spot? I cannot understand what you are saying this regarding. Hello. Yes, sir. actually, I'm not. I'm not able to understand the question. Actually, yeah, there's some limitation by you. See, suppose you're saying 15 tallies and 100 tallies we are using together. What is the use? Of, why we are using it together? It is a different process. Each, each GDS or GST reconciliation is individually we have to done, isn't it? Okay. So basically, sir, when doing the TDS in the GST reconciliation, I need voucher level data along with cost category and various other things which are also there in the and plus the ledger see, master see, within. See, one minute, one, one second. Suppose we are the, doing the GST reconciliation, why we look into the cost center? What is the purpose of that? Can you explain that? Sir, I'm not. Uh... See, you are saying that is uh, you can look into each voucher type, cost and uh, and the products and everything you can look. See, suppose we are using the GST reconciliation software or your your system, your uh, what you call the software. Why we are doing in the uh, group wise or uh, other other categories? So that is your what call is the, because companies can no, ask no, no, no. Co it, companies no, 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 can ask for any that is uh, so that is your call because we have got no, no, data no, elements. What is the purpose of GST reconciliation? We want to reconcile whether it is accounted or not, it is given and we got a credit or not. This is the GST reconciliation. No other categorization is required for that, isn't it? Okay. Say for example, I want to know. Which in which invoices TDS was deducted at a right rate because TDS rate can vary now one percent five percent. Which invoices it was correct? Which invoices it was wrong? You know, and I also want to put in alerts. Okay, fine. Is, anyway, this is a debatable issue because the TDS rate is different for according to different different situation. Right. Then we will categorize each each. Part in a different uh, what you call ledger. Then in that ledger, everything will be the same. So just less than one minute. So that's what I'm trying to say. For audit purposes, this tool can be used. Because it will make it very easy. You'll define the rule here itself. No? Yeah, suppose I want to use your this thing, then only we can find out whether it is useful or not. Okay, then fine. You are, you are seeing 